testing will include chopping through a piece of steel as though it was a piece of armor and then through a piece of rope to show how much sharpness was retained. Test number one is to test the capability of the Bowie knife to do what a Bowie knife ordinarily do, which is chop on wood and cut things. And so we're going to cut into a four by four piece of wood 10 times and see how much we can chop away and whether or not we damage the knife. In test number two, we're seeing how much sharpness is retained after test number one. And so we're going to put a water bottle on top of the stand and try to cleanly slice it into two pieces with a quick cut of the knife. The first test is again to see how well the knife works in chopping. And so we're gonna chop into bones and we'll chop 10 times into a bone to see if that will damage the knife. Bones are harder than wood. Test number four is again a test of the sharpness and there we're going to cut a one inch rope with the knife to see if it's retained enough sharpness to cut cleanly through a one inch rope. What do these two amazingly dissimilar objects have in common? They're both excellent ways to test a hammer. The first thing we're going to do to your hammers today is drive some railroad spikes into an oak log. We check the, the face of the hammer afterwards and we check the feel of the hammer. This is a really important test because a hammer isn't just a thing that exists by itself, it's a tool and it should be usable as a tool, even though Thor's hammer was more of a weapon, but you know, that's splitting hairs. We also look to see how deeply these go in and how the hammer felt in our hands, how much it tore up our elbows or shoulders or any of those things. It really gave us an intimate knowledge of the feel and weight and balance of the hammers. So here we go, let's get started. Now that we've driven the railroad spikes, the next test we're going to do is we're going to bash some concrete. This, this does a couple of things. Smashing concrete does a couple of things that, for our evaluation. One, uh, it looks cool on camera. Two, it checks the face of the hammer to see how much indentation and any pitting that you're going to get from this really nasty surface. And three, we can check how well it blows up a piece of concrete because that's a good measure of how good a hammer is, right? First up, we're going to smash your hammers into ceramic squares. Then we're going to go to successively smaller ball bearings and see how they impact the face. And we wanted to really check out the faces of these hammers, really do some abusive testing. So we figured, take it easy on the first bit, we'll hit it with a marshmallow, see how that holds up. This is, is actually alumina ceramic and it is a hard substance that explodes when hit by a hammer, it turns out. 
But it also, it does check the edge of the uh, hammer face, it checks the entire face, and it checks the hardness of the hammers. So it was a good way to begin our discernment of how these hammers are faring. <laughs> run, DiMaggio, run! The next thing we did was to go and hammer onto successively smaller uh, 52100 ball bearings. Uh, we went from large to small because that changes the impact size. You know, and so this is the only place to go from this like half inch, half inch ball bearing. It's like a spike. You know, you we're really just going more and more and more pounds per square inch because the same pounds, less inch. Uh, sort of like a, uh, a, a unscientific Brunel test, and it gave us a vague notion of hardness of the face and uh, any, any deformation that happened, we would take into account and use it along with all the other stuff that we've been already talking about to pick a finalist from the last four. <laughs> The first test will be a test of strength and durability where they will hit a piece of steel conduit with their sword. The things that we'll be looking at are the quality of the casting, the uh, choice of casting method and how well that was executed, the construction of the swords, the balance of the swords and how well they fit into the user's hand, and then during testing how well they survive the tests. The second test then will be a sharpness test where they'll try to slice a pool noodle in half. And those are really soft plastic things and if you don't have a sharp sword, it'll just bounce out. But if you've got a really sharp sword, it'll make a nice clean cut. The second set of tests will be of the five finalists. The five finalists, really, the test will be done now by our judges. Three of the judges, Patrick, uh, Ben, and Philip, will do two tests. One of the tests will be for them to use the sword to see how it feels and how it functions by chopping on a piece of railroad tie. And so that big piece of wood, they will be hitting with a sword to see how well the sword feels and works. The second test Ben will do where he uh, shows how well the sword will penetrate into a number 10 tin can on the floor. And he will penetrate the number 10 tin can and we can see whether it damages the tip. Those are the two tests that will be done for the five finalists for the judges to make their final determination for the winner of the performance test. Hitori Hanzo! <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! There are two tests that each team will do on their spear. The first one is to penetrate an 18-gauge piece of steel three times to see if that damages the edge or the point of their spear. And then, secondly, to see how sharp it remains, they're supposed to 
cut into a carpet and see whether or not they can slice it twice. And then the judges will do three additional tests for the final. We're going to be doing some dynamic testing and, uh, and see how they work. Judging this competition is, is going to be difficult because there are some really technically advanced spears out there. There are some really traditional looking spears out there, ones that I would have assumed were, were smithed or forged and they were actually cast. So from first blush, it's difficult to pick you know, top 10 or whatever. But as we go through the testing, we're going to see how things hold up, how they feel, how they like, perform and we'll be able to winnow it down to several that are uh, upper echelon. We're gonna do some fun testing. These Halligan bars are gonna be put through the paces by a, an actual firefighter who knows what they're capable of. One of the tests we're doing, we have a about five foot long apparatus that puts the halogen bar in between two pieces of C-channel that hooks it to a come along with a strain gauge on it. We're breaking quarter inch grade five bolts, puts about 500 pounds of stress on the forks. In addition to that, we've got a forcible entry door. I own a company that makes them. So it is a resettable door so we can continually break the locks on them. So the students, I believe, are forcing outward swinging and then the judges will be forcing an, an inward swinging door. Really just to test the design uh, geometries because there's fairly specific geometry to be able to get in. So it'll be interesting to see some of the ones that are a little more outside the box, how they hold up. <laughs>